Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome to my shop. I've got plant irons and a whole bunch of them, but which one is the best? Let's dive in. If you're new to Wood by Wright, you might not know I have done a huge plain iron test in the past, and we have a whole bunch of these that we have tested over the years. And I've made a couple updates to it as new irons have come out, but there are two new irons that are of a different class. And I wasn't going to do another update, but after experimenting with them, I, I had to actually test them and see if it was my brain or the working on it. So let's take a look at these. Before we get started, I know I'm going to have a whole bunch of people suddenly asking, uh, where's, the, where's the testing information? How exactly did you do the tests on all of these irons? I have a whole series of videos um, going into what the test is. I have a video that's actually a live run through of one string of the tests. Uh, I have a whole video dedicated to specifically showing what all of the test parameters are. And later on, I'm going to be going into the spreadsheet here and showing some of that. So if you want some of that more information, Go down in the description down below. I've got links to those videos down there. I want to keep this one a little bit shorter, otherwise it's going to end up being like an hour long. However, to look at some of the new irons here, we have to talk a little bit about history. Uh, you know, historically speaking, when a blacksmith made an iron, they had the method that they used to make the steel. And different blacksmiths made slightly different steels and slightly different qualities. And over time, they started to get a little more standardized. You started getting some from Sheffield, Pacific System. There was one place that made the steel and then the blacksmiths worked it to make their irons. But there was still a lot of variability in the steel because batch to batch would be ever so slightly different. As the steels started to standardize, we kind of came down to two basic steels that were used in most irons. We have the A2 and the O1. Depending upon whether you wanted something harder and more durable, but difficult to sharpen, or easy to sharpen, but it's not going to last quite as long, you kind of picked where you were on the spectrum. Over time, we started to learn a few more things, and the heat treatment changed. We started to get into cryo steels, or the new fangled PM steels like the PMV11. And we got some really good things, but in general, they were all still within that range of the O1 to A2. Generally, the big difference between all of the steels comes down to the tempering. If it was done well with a good steel, you're going to have a really good product. If it was done poorly with a good steel, you're going to have a really poor product. And with the advancement of computer-controlled tempering, they got better and better. And you see good quality planes that can hold up incredibly well. Even things like PMV11, there's still a little bit of variability, but not that much. You got really good steels. And we kind of got to the point where you could get a really good steel from just about anywhere. Well, yeah, there's some variability, but not that much. And one of the interesting things in the test is I have cheap steel that I got off of Amazon that actually does really close to as well as the really, really good stuff from Lee Nielsen and others. And you'd be hard pressed to tell the difference on a casual use. You'd have to use it for a while to really start to feel which one feels better. It got to the point where I decided I'm, I'm not gonna do another iron test. There, there's no reason for me to do another iron test because uh, honestly, they're all really close. And you get what you pay for. Yeah, you're gonna get some that are a little better, some that are a little worse, but honestly, they're all good irons. So if they're all passable, why would I ever really want to do another iron test? Then one of our viewers sent me an iron from Lake Erie Toolworks. It's made out of a CPM magnet cut steel. And I thought, yeah, I'll give it a try and see how it goes. And I kept using it and kept using it and kept using it and kept using it and never sharpened it. But honestly, the difference in how it feels is, is probably just, you know, the way I feel about it. Uh, maybe I should run this through the test and just see how it goes. I mean, I'm not going to see much of any difference compared to the others, but I'll, I'll run it through the test and just, just see what happens. And, uh, wow. Um, wow. Not only did it outperform all other steels pretty much across the board, it did it very, very obviously. It was not just a fluke. It wasn't just how I felt about it. The numbers showed that's a serious step forward in steel. I was thinking about doing a video on it, but I had one of the early ones from Lake Erie, and I wasn't quite sure if that was it. So I, I, I put one in order, and they were on back order for a while. And I wanted to hold off and actually test another one from a different batch and, and see, you know, are there any aberrations in the data? While I was doing that, Zen Wu contacted me and said, hey, we've got something new you've got to try. And I thought, since I'm already doing one, why not another? The irons from Lake Erie Toolworks are, are fairly standard. They come in the thick and the traditional, but they're really nice standard irons with a solid piece. They're not laminated or anything, it's just that steel all the way through. The irons from Zin Wu, on the other hand, are something wildly different. 
the bodies on them and the chip breakers are actually made out of titanium. And then there's a laminated piece just for the cutting edge. You can see how they're laminated and they're actually sliding dovetailed in. I didn't think a plane iron could be a work of art, uh, but these are just incredibly gorgeous. They all have engraving on there and you can see the plate just beautifully edged and engraved back in here. This one, which is designed to go into a wooden body, uh, even has this brass fitting on here. And these irons are unbelievably, <laughs> incredibly, massively thick. They are some of the thickest irons here. They're right up there in thickness with this tapered Sheffield. I, I would never say that an iron could be a work of art on its own, but these are just <laughs> bonkers gorgeous. I mean, just, wow. And that added beauty really kind of raised some red flags to me because anytime something goes that crazy good into detail, they're usually trying to hide something or they're just upselling the detail rather than the actual functionality of it. And if you know anything about Wood by Wright, I, I do like pretty things, I like things that make me happy, but I make my decisions based on math, on science, and actually let's test this and see what happens. So let's take these over to the computer. We have two Lake Erie irons and we have two from Zin Wu. Uh, let's see how they actually perform in reality. So let's actually take a look at these numbers. And yes, this is the exact same chart from last time. Uh, each one of these rows going across is another iron that we have tested. And then all the way down here on the bottom, number 25, number 26, number 27, and number 28. Those are the four new ones we are adding. I'm going to come back to these red numbers here in a moment. We're just going to come across with this. Uh, in here we have the measurements of the particular iron. And then these are the numbers from all of the testing. And over here you can see the raw data from the testing. Uh, these ones here are all the durability and these ones here are edge retention. The one problem I had with this particular test is the edge retention. The Zinwu irons are laminated and that means that there is less actual hard steel right up at the tip. Uh, and so they generally will sharpen faster. But the test done here only tests the very tip. So the sharpenability will actually be a little bit better for them, though I've left the data raw so you can actually see how sharpenable is the actual steel at the tip. But understand when it comes to the Zen Wu, they're probably going to be a little bit better than the numbers show here on the graph. Every test was performed three times. I would love to do more and get more data points on here, but three times is about as much time as I can get on this. Uh, one full series is, is about a day's worth of work to get the detailed test. I'll let you view the video on how this test was actually done, but basically each one was tested 400 strokes and then throughout the 400 strokes we tested the edge to see how keen, how sharp is it. So you can actually see how it changes over time. For the edge retention or the sharpenability, we actually put the tip and stood the iron up on the plate and sharpened just the edge and saw how fast can we take off steel. So that brings us back here to these numbers here. We have a row of hardness. We had each one tested. We have a row of sharpenability in comparison to others. Um, so what is the ending sharpness minus the beginning sharpness? We have a row of sharpenability, which comes over here and compares the ending sharpness to the beginning sharpness. We have the average keenness. In other words, how sharp can you possibly get the edge on there? What is the average number, the average starting number? We have final dullness. In other words, what is the average it gets to at 400 strokes? And this one here is one of my favorites, the strokes to 300. How many strokes? strokes does it take to get that edge to a 300 dullness? And for most of these irons, that became fairly apparent. Some of them were really bad. It was 40 strokes and they were there. Some of them were really good. 120 strokes, 200 strokes, the Hocked A2 Cryo. And you're coming down these numbers and they're really, really good. But we come down here to the last four on this sheet and we have 400, 360, 360, 360. And honestly, the only reason that's 400 is it just ticked over. It was, it was 296 at 360. Um, so all of those are, are really, really, really close. Um, wow. Okay. Um, all four of them ranked right about the same. Final dullness, the lower the number, the better. 203, 227, 216, 203. Those numbers are all right in the exact same ballpark. Average keenness, how sharp can you get the edge? 100, uh, 106, 105, 104. Wow. Um, in comparison to most of these, that's really, really sharp. I mean, you go with the, the Calistro, the, the cheap one from Amazon. I really couldn't get that all that sharp. Then we come over here to sharpenability. And they are a little bit more difficult to sharpen than some of the other ones. They are on the high end. 
um, but not by that much. And if you're doing something with diamonds, you're really not going to notice that big a difference between them. But the big surprise to me is the Lake Erie Toolworks. I had the, the regular thin one and the thick one. These came from two very different batches and I got very similar numbers. Um, you know, they were slightly different, but they were within the realm of variability. Um, both of them were miles ahead of the others. But these are the raw numbers. Let's actually look at these graphs over on the side. To give you an idea what the numbers mean, I have this chart up here. This is the durability chart for everything. Um, however, it clumps everything together because of this one line that goes way up here. That's actually the Harbor Freight iron. I'm honestly surprised they even considered that an iron. It was horrible. <laughs> On this chart down here, this actually spreads them all out. It removes that Harbor Freight iron so you can see them a little bit better. And most of the irons, you can see, they're all right in this range. They're all relatively, and honestly, they, they look like there's a big spread here, but these are all really close. But then down here, you have these four irons. These are the four new ones that were just tested. And they're all right down here at the bottom, uh, which means that's good. That's really, really sharp down here. They all started being some of the most keen irons. And at the end, they were still the most keen out of all of them tested. They had the most durability by a long shot. And most of these, you'll see, they get really dull really fast, and they all jump way up over here. And these ones actually stay for a while. And there's a, there's a jump a little ways in, and then it's kind of this flat progression from there. Whereas all of these up here, um, big jump, and then the flat progression is way up top. And then down here is the last chart on the, the sharpen ability. Um, so you can see on this one, um, where they all fall in comparison. But this down here at the bottom, this is the chart that everyone wants to see. This is the comparison of all of them, and you take their rough score, and you line them all up, and you see how do they actually fall in. And here we have the last four. One, two, three, four. Uh, these are all head and shoulders above the rest. The next closest one was Lee Nielsen I had, uh, and then you had, what was this one over here? Veritas PMV11, uh, the Clifton. So those are really big, high names in the iron, and these blew them out of the water in overall performance. But how do I come to these numbers over here? Let's actually move up here to the red section. In each of these, we have a score for its price, how expensive are they? And honestly, the Zen Wu, those are some of the most expensive ones. Yes, they do come with a chip breaker, but you are paying for quality finish on them. The Lake Erie Toolworks, those are still relatively expensive, around the $80 mark. Um, we have thickness. Some people are really, really interested in thickness, and the Zen Wu, they just don't get any thicker than that. Uh, the Lake Erie Tool Works comes with a thick iron or a thin iron. You can choose what you want. Average keenness, how sharp can they get? They all were a 10. Uh, speed to 300, they were 9s and 10s, as you can see right on that. Final sharpness, they were all 10s on that. Sharpenability, they were all a bit low on that, but again, that's just testing the tip. Uh, the Zen Wu would actually end up being a little bit better on that uh, with the actual real-world sharpening speed. And then hardness. Um, how hard is the iron? We take all of these numbers and we give them all a weight down here. 6, 2, 1, 8, 10. And so I, I kind of see, you know, what, what's important to me? Price, price is, is relatively important to me. Thickness, I really could care less about that. Uh, keenness, I couldn't care anything about that. How, how sharp you can actually get the edge, it really isn't important. Uh, speed to 300, that's relatively important. Final sharpness, in other words, how sharp was it at the end of all the testing? That's the one I'm most interested in. Uh, sharpenability, eh, I could take it or leave it. Hardness, I, I, I couldn't care about. So then I take these numbers and I multiply them by the weight, and it gives us the score over here on the side. Now, one of the fun things about this chart is you can take this, if you come up here to File, and you come down here to make a copy, you can make a copy of this and you can change these weights. So you can change them to what is most important to you. So if you really like a thick iron, you could bump this up to a tin. Um, if keenness is very important to you, bump that up. And you can see how this changes in, in the list. Um, also, you may want to change the, the sharpen ability number on here. Um, that's just the edge for the, the Zen Wu. Um, but that's what you get with the laminated steel. So taking this all into consideration, we can come down here and let's see, the uh, the Lee, Neil, the Lee Nielsen is a 202, which was a phenomenal score. The next closest one was PMV11 at 196. Uh, the lowest of these three was a 220. <laughs> um, and then the Lake Erie th was a, a, th a 231, 229, and 227. Um, honestly, those are all the exact same. Just, wow. They're, by the numbers, better. You often hear a lot of people saying is they don't make steel like they used to. They used to make really quality stuff. Sheffield steel, some of the best. And all honesty, every test I've done on older steel, it's good in comparison to the other older steels. 
But in comparison to most any quality steel that has been made in the last 30 years, they've gone far and above that. And then we've got this new generation of steels that are just unbelievable. And it's enough that I am actually personally buying several of these Lake Erie irons to put in my planes because I'm, I'm, I'm loving it. And these Zen Wu irons are just beyond beautiful. They're just a work of art. So I don't know if I'm going to be doing any more tests in the future. I don't know how things can get any better than these, but maybe I will. Who knows what the future is going to hold and the technology and some carbon polymer thing is going to come out and beat them all in the future. We'll have to see. So what's the takeaway for this? Honestly, if you're strapped for money, uh, this whole video is worthless. The, the difference between um, a cheap, decent steel and a really high-end, expensive steel, uh, yeah, you're going to probably get about twice the life out of it. But it just means you're going to have to sharpen more often. It will still perform the work, and it will do it very well. But if you've got a little bit of money to spend and you want to bump up to something premium that holds its edge, uh, the Lake Erie Toolworks irons, I, I'm, I'm blown away. I don't know how they can get it at that price. Um, just really, really, really good, and I am loving them. If you've got a little bit more money and you want that feel and the premium, there is nothing more premium than these Zin Wu irons. They, they're just, oh, yeah. And uh, this one, I did the testing in, in this wooden block plane, and I thought, mm, it just it deserves something better than that. So I'm probably going to be taking this one and making a, a, a plane that is deserving of its quality because... I have never come across an iron that is just as beautiful and as gorgeous as these. And still, not just beautiful and gorgeous, but outperforms the market. That's just, that is phenomenal. And I am in love with these. I'm probably going to do a whole video on these coming soon because they're just, they're, there's several little innovations in them that are, um, yeah, really interesting. So stay tuned. So I would love to hear your thoughts on this whole test because I have had a lot of fun with this. You know I love spreadsheets, I love numbers. And if you wanna see more tests like this, I have one with glue tests, I have one with chisels. I have one that I'm working on with rust prevention. Um, I did a preliminary one on that a while ago and there's, there's a few others coming down the line, so stay tuned. More spreadsheets to come. But if you have any thoughts or ideas, things that I missed or could go back on, please let me know those down in the comments down below. Um, I do read through them, I answer all those, and it often leads me down a road of something else that I can test or something I missed and I should go back and do. So please let me know. As well as that does actually help out the channel. Anytime you comment down below, thank you. You are getting us in front of more people, helping the algorithm and all the YouTube things. Uh, you know how it works. There's links down below and all of that. Like, comment, share, subscribe. Thank you. <laughs> but if you want to go even farther and really like what we're doing and would like actually to support this because most of these irons um, I have actually purchased over the years and testing like this does actually become rather expensive. Uh, if you'd like to help out with that, think about becoming a patron. All of these names over here, those are patrons on Patreon. And without patrons, we wouldn't be able to do things like this. So if you like that, think about helping us out over there. And uh, on that note, I think that'll do it for now. Until next time, have a wonderful day. I could say this was a really sharp video, or wow, this is a cutting edge topic. But I know from time to time it got a little bit dull. Uh, let me just say that this video was definitely worth its metal.